All right, so a couple of things here, guys, to do with um, to do with our uh, acceleration stuff here. Um, first thing, okay, we got to remember that our formula is A equals VF, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over the change in time. Okay, um, now I showed you yesterday there on the podcast how you do your manipulations. Um, you know, some of them are quite easy and a few of them maybe are a little less intuitive, okay? Uh, solving for A really just involves switching A and T, okay? Solving for VF means multiplying both sides by T and then doing what with VI? Adding it to both sides, okay? Now, um, this is where that half rule of algebra starts coming into play, okay? If you remember, the rules of algebra were if you want to move something, you do the opposite, okay? And if what you do to one side, you do to the other. And then the half rule was move the things not attached to what you're looking for first, all right? So if we go back here and we're looking for, let's say, VI, okay? What's not attached to VI right now? T. T's not attached to VI, so I would move it first, okay? So T times A, T gets moved over to there, all right? So then I'm left with this. All right, now I've got a decision. I can solve for negative VI or I can solve for positive VI, which makes more sense. Positive VI. All right, so I'm going to move VI over here, same as I did a minute ago when I was solving for VF by adding it to both sides. Okay, so now I have this. Now, how do I get VI by itself? Minus T times A. Here's what you have to think. Order of operations says that I would have to multiply these two numbers before I added it to this one. Everyone follow me there? So really, this is VI times a number, right? So I can move that number, even though it's two numbers, okay, over to this side here, okay, by going like this, right? And then I have VI. That's probably the most difficult manipulation of that formula. The rest are, are pretty intuitive, okay? How are we doing on the worksheet? How far are we? Anyone like question 10? Okay, a couple of people. All right, let's, uh, let's keep working on that. Are there any you want to go over that gave you trouble yesterday when you started the sheet? Don't be afraid to ask, guys, if there are any that gave you trouble specifically. Four? Okay. Is that this one? This one here? With the proton? Okay, so we got a proton that's accelerated in a linear accelerator. This is like the big, the big Hadrian Collider, okay, that they have in Switzerland. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so they got the. It's basically they accelerate subatomic particles and smash them together and see if what happens. Okay. Um, so uh, the acceleration is 800 meters per second squared. So that's given us a. Right, and we always want to write down our givens, okay, for two reasons. It helps us figure out what to do, and you get a mark for it, so you might as well. Okay, how long does it take? That means I'm looking for T. Uh, the proton to get from rest, so VI is 0 meters per second, okay, to 2.5 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, so I'm looking for T. So... A equals VF minus VI over T. If I want to get T by itself, I multiply both sides by T. It comes over here, then I divide both sides by A, and I'm left with this. VF minus VI over A. All right, so T equals 2.5 times 10 to the 8 minus 0 over um, 800. All right, now, when you're punching that into your calculator, my calculator's probably not going to work. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, so, we'll have here, um, in brackets, 2.5, just like we did with Avogadro's number, right? you got to put anything that's got an exponent on it in brackets. Okay, 2.5 times 10 to the 8 minus 0 is still the same number, so I won't bother with that. Okay, divided by 800. Okay, and that should give us 312,500 seconds. Okay, so probably the tricky part was what to do with that big number. All right, and the other one's giving us trouble. Five. 
All right, so cars coasting backward. And this is a tricky one because we got two different directions, and that's what makes this one tough. Okay, cars coasting backwards down a hill at negative 3 meters per second. So that's VI, negative 3.0 meters per second. Okay, when the driver gets the engine started, okay, after two and a half seconds, okay, the car is moving at four and a half meters per second forwards or up the hill now. All right, so what's the average acceleration of the car? So I'm looking for A. So we don't have to do any manipulating. That's good. That makes it a little easier. Okay, but the key here is that VF is positive and VI is negative. So it's really like adding it because my change in velocity is more than 1.5. It's 7.5. I started out rolling backwards and ended up going forwards. Um, Either way would probably be fine. I just read it because that's mathematically what it is, right? Okay. Um, so divided by our time, which was two and a half seconds. Okay. So when we do that, we should get positive three okay, meters per second squared, right? And you do have to have the positive on there, indicating it accelerated uphill. Okay. And the other ones. All right. Um, now, on this one here, guys, I would have to accept both positive as a correct vector, or I could also accept up the hill, because it actually gave us both, didn't it? Okay. Normally, a question will not do that. Okay. I did that on this one because you know it's one of the first ones you've done, so I wanted to make sure it was clear. But uh, if I was giving you this question on a test, I would say a car is coasting backwards down a hill at three meters per second. When the driver gets the engine started, after two and a half seconds, the car is moving at four and a half meters per second up the hill. Okay, what is the average acceleration of the car? I wouldn't give you the positive and negative. I'd make you assign those values just to see if you remembered that that was what was going on. Okay. All right. Any other ones you want to go over? Okay. Keep going on that. I'd like to finish that worksheet up before, uh, significantly before the end of class, if possible, so we can start on energy. Okay. I'll give you some time to work on that. Any ones that give you trouble, let me know, and we'll go over them together. All right, so we've got uh, this particle moving with an initial velocity of 112 meters per second, so we're told VI, okay, and that's positive. Um, and the particle has no acceleration until time three seconds. So it travels at a constant speed for three seconds, okay, after which its acceleration is negative four meters per second squared. All right, what's the velocity at time 16 seconds? Okay. It doesn't start accelerating till time 3 seconds, and it wants to know how fast it's going at time 16 seconds. How long did it accelerate for? 13 seconds. That's the trick to this question. It didn't accelerate the first 3 seconds, so our time is actually only 13 seconds, Okay, and that's what kind of makes this tricky. So A equals VF minus VI over T. We're solving for VF, so we multiply both sides by T, add VI to both sides, and we've got VF. All right, so VF equals 112 plus um, negative 4 times 13 seconds. And now it doesn't want to work again. That is really annoying. All right, uh, so 112, oh, it was all in there, 112, okay, um, plus negative 4 times 13, okay, so we got 60 there, okay, 60 meters per second, and that has to be positive because the initial direction was positive. All right, all right, any others? Everyone's good with those? Okay. Um, I would expect that tomorrow's quiz will probably have a graph and an acceleration problem on it. Okay, so kind of be ready for that. This one? Okay, so the runner accelerates to a velocity of 5.36. So we know that VF is 5.36 meters per second because that's what he accelerates to. Okay, and he does that in 3.00 seconds. Sorry, and I need to write that this is west because it tells me that as well. Uh, his average acceleration is 0.640 meters per second squared, and 
Uh, and that's also directed west. That's important to know. Okay. What was his velocity when he began accelerating? So I'm looking for VI. All right. So I've got A equals okay, uh, VF minus VI over T. And I'm solving for, um, for VI here. So A times T. This is the tricky manipulation here, guys. So I go A times T okay, equals this. I add VI to both sides. All right, to get rid of it, and then I subtract T times A over to the other side. So VI equals VF minus, uh, sorry, um, yeah, minus T times A. Okay, so that'll be 5.36 okay, uh, minus uh, 3 times 0.64. Right, and when we do that, okay, we should get 3.44. Yep. Any other ones? All righty.